Hi YouTubers, I got this Sony Reel to Reel. I got it on eBay. When I turned it on, the meters came on, put a tape on it, nothing was happening. So the first thing I'm going to do to try to diagnose this is to take this cap here. And this is a sort of generic cap. If you're in the United States, you use the 1.5 uh, side of the cap. It's like a twin cap. And if you're in Europe, then you they join the two caps together by a little jump lead which is under here. That would make this a two UF cap. The replacement I got on eBay, this one here by Ducati, I couldn't get anything with terminals on the top but it has two leads coming out of it. It's not polarized and that made in Romania it took about three or four days to arrive. It's quite a bit smaller. But what I'm going to do is wire this up and see if it will turn on. And if it turns on then I know the problem is the cap. Um, if it doesn't, then I'll have to look further and at that point I'd probably start suspecting that the motor is not working properly. I've taken the plastic cap off the capacitor. You can see there's a white lead here. This is connecting with these two terminals for the two sides of the capacitor. There's an orange lead attaching to this side and two black leads attaching to this side. So what I'll be doing is removing the two black leads, the two orange leads, and just reconnecting them to these wires and uh, then I'm going to see if I can get the motor to run I've joined that back up put a bit of heat shrink on it just so um, just for safety sake because there's mains voltage running through here so you can see the light there so there's power to the unit when you lift that up that indicates to the machine that there's a tape and you can see now that that pulley there is turning so that's good so the problem with it not working was just the capacitor. So what I shall do now is I shall put a tape on and just test it, see if we've got sound. Well it seems to me that almost everything is seized up. The belts are quite slack, nothing's turning. Uh, I'll give you a demonstration. So I've got it on the fastest speed. So I've got that's turning, I'll put it in play. The flywheel is picking up, but this, this has absolutely no tension at all. The, the belt is just rubbing on it, really. Um, if I put it into the rewind mode, nothing happens. And this is very, very stiff. Um, The belt that runs this wheel here, that also comes down and runs the tape counter, they're completely slack, so they're not offering any resistance. When this is out, this is locked. When it's forward, it should be released, but I wouldn't say it turns easily. And I don't see any other belt on it, apart from these. So I would think this should spin quite freely. I'll take this off first and have a look at it and see what's going on. I'm going to record everything I do so that when it comes to putting it back I know how it's supposed to go together. So the first thing I notice is there's a spring that comes out with this screw. I'll keep those together in the bag. That comes off. At this point this doesn't seem to want to come off. Same thing, I'm going to put these in another bag in case some of the parts are different. Just that. Right, well these don't pull off. Well the key to taking those off seems to be on the back. That seems to be turning as I turn the wheel, so I think the whole axis of the wheel is held by that pin. So I'm going to pull it out with this screwdriver if I can. 
There we go. Put it in the bag. Two tiny washers. And I think that's it. Right, I'm just going to turn this around just to be sure there's nothing in the way. Okay, well there are some belts on this, but apart from that, the only thing that seems to be in the way is possibly this brake. Okay. Absolutely bone dry. That's probably why it wasn't turning. It's, it's very, very dry. Again, seemingly very dry. This one has a spring behind it. So there's the wheel, there's this backing plate, and there's a the spring. I'm going in the bag. Behind that, there's another washer and a some sort of plastic neoprene type bushing. Um, there's also a bushing on the other side. That is coming off actually. But no metal washer on that side. Lots of black grease though. <coughs> I'm getting grease everywhere. Be careful with the grease folks, it's uh, spreading there. You won't believe. Right, there's the pin for that. So that will go in here another bag. So there's a little clip. There's just the wheel by the looks of it. Right, there is a small, tiny, tiny Spacing washer. And this neoprene washer. And then one last bag for this last wheel. And watch closely this time. Perhaps I can see what uh, what should have happened. There we go, that's the ring or the clip. And then the washer, a very small, tiny washer. It's very small. And then the wheel. There doesn't seem to be anything on the back of the wheel. And then the plastic neoprene type washer. Right, so that's that. That's the four wheels off. Um, I can take this belt off the motor, I believe. Okay. I thought before I cleaned anything, I'd just have a quick look at where it was lubed in the first place and make a record of it so that um, when it's all clean, I can be sure to make sure I don't forget anything. So. This bit here has lubrication, that's one of the wheels. This pivots it seems. Um, I don't know if there's lubrication here, but there's certainly two metal contact points there. I think they might benefit from some. There's lubrication here where this thing slides. There's lubrication here under this one as that slides. There's lubrication in this slot here. This moves backwards and forwards. Lube on the back here. Um, that's actually all I can see at the moment. So it's there, in there, there, all along there. All these pivot points presumably will get some oil. Um, it's here, here, looks like there was a lube there and there, that's for those two other wheels in the centre.
cleans good. I wouldn't use this on the tape heads or the rollers or anything like that, but in these particular areas. It, gets, it dissolves the grease quite easily. Just wipe it off as soon as you can. It will evaporate. White spirit's not going to leave any residue particularly. It will evaporate. Cotton buds for the smaller areas. See there around that ring where the grease was. It takes care of the grease pretty quickly. You can see how this is working. It seems to be working fine. The alcohol in the States is quite cheap, the isopropyl. And that's not right. Over here it's not. You're paying about six six dollars for a tiny little two hundred and fifty mil bottle. So I've got to keep it for things that really need it. I've cleaned this area here. What I'm going to do now is just take these off, give them a clean underneath and clean the stems. And then I'm going to put them back so I won't lose them. I'll clean this one up. That seemed to go quite well. This one on the other hand is a bit more complicated. What I'm going to do is take these two pieces off, clean them and return them, put them back. I just wanted to make a record of how this went together because this is a spring-loaded mechanism and this part here is on one side of this lever and the other part is on the other so I just want to be absolutely sure I put that back in the right way. So we'll start by removing this little clip. It came off pretty good. And I assume these will slide up if they're opened up enough come off together and stay together. Okay, well, that's quite dirty back there but this will need grease. You can see it's quite well greased. So wipe it clean. I'm going to take this plastic washer off. It doesn't want to come off because it's stuck. Give that a clean. Let's clean all this old grease off. It really is lifting the grease quite easily and quite well. Just an interesting sort of colouring on here. I'm wondering what caused that. If that's a result of using the 
white spirit. I'm going to use some isoprol on here, use a bit of alcohol, and see if it makes a difference, if it dries without the coloration. I was wondering if it's possible to remove all of this, uh, but it looks like the head assembly here, it's all wired in, so I think the head assembly's got to come off. So I'm going to do that now. They're on quite firm. You might have a magnetized screwdriver, so keep it away from everything if you can. I will be demagnetizing everything later anyway. Yeah, I think that's it. Those three. And this should just lift off to the side. You see the way the wires are. You've got the three grey ones here, the green and the blue on the other side of this piece of metal that's sticking up. Now I'm going to take this off so that I can get underneath it and clean. I will say one thing though, this flywheel sounds a bit unhealthy, like it's uh, rasping or grating. You've got to push hard, you don't want to strip these screws. So that's four. That looks like that might be it. Okay. Now this part came out without too much trouble. Um, it was this screw here was just catching on this bit. So you have to sort of pull it out at an angle. This is very dirty. Uh, it's got all kinds of goo and gunk on it. I'm cleaning this now. The flywheel was situated in there, it just pulled out, it was difficult to get it out, this was very greasy and dried up actually. Uh, I'm going to use a q-tip to get in there to clean that. There's a little felt oil ring here which must remain there. Uh, this grease here, I'm going to remove this, put some fresh grease in when the time comes, clean this up here. Just basically do all the usual cleaning. There's um, some grease here which needs to be looked at on the switch and um, the pinch roller lifts up and down to be honest this pinch roller doesn't look too bad I've, I'm quite enthusiastic that that will be fine um, that can be removed with the clip there's a little C clip there that can be taken out there's a spring underneath it you could take the pinch roller out to um, clean it which I may do but for now I'll leave until I get this stuff to clean it with I'm going to leave it in place. I'll continue to remove the grease from here clean up this flywheel you can see there's um, marks here presumably from the belts and quite a bit of goo on the top so I'm going to get all that clean. The pinch roller here or this uh, idler wheel I should say it's got a bit of flexibility in it, it doesn't it doesn't seem too bad I suspect it will need some reconditioning. This is very dirty, there's lots of rubber on this. I'm not going to use this graphite grease, I think that's what this is. When I put it back together I'm going to use something else. Um, it's something called Super Lube. It's an American product. And I think it will be better uh, than grey stuff which is just awful. It gets everywhere. It gets onto everything and gets everywhere. Now interestingly enough as I was cleaning this as you can probably see the metalwork sort of took on this purplish orange sunset shades <laughs> and I thought perhaps it was because I was using the white spirit so I used the alcohol um, and it did the same thing. In fact, it's already, you can see in, around the edges here, it sort of looks a bit like that. There's a serial number there. I'm removing the flywheel now. There was a clip, then there was a very small plastic washer, then there was this washer here, which is, uh, looks like plastic, and then 
this should come off the spindle. It, it's coming off but it's quite stiff. I would say this really needs some lubrication. But by and large, the, although there's a little bit of wear on the wheel, it doesn't look too bad. And then there's, as usual, another one of these plastic bushings. Um, and although, and this one has a a little pin on it, and that pin engages in that notch, so that'll be important when you put it back. And that all goes in a bag. Well, before going any further, I just wanted to show you the four products I'm using. Left to right, I've got the Super Lube American product, the Rubber Renew from MG Chemicals, I believe that's also an American product, the Singer Oil and the Isopropanol, I got the 99.9% .9 pure. Those are the four things that I've purchased to do this project and I'm sure they'll be useful for lots of projects in the future. I'm using this rubber renewer that I showed you earlier. I'm applying it with a cotton bud and just washing the surface with it but it seems to be sinking in. I don't believe it's evaporating. It's almost as if it's going into the rubber itself and presumably rejuvenating it. Some of the rubber's coming off onto the Q-tip. I suspect in some way it's kind of dissolving the top only the slightest amount. So I'll give it a few coats. The more you do it, the less it seems to come off on the Q-tip. I suggest it's soaking well into the rubber. It's supposed to um, sort of change it at a, I guess, a molecular level, making it more pliable and rubbery destroying some of that sort of rubbery tack. That's the reason why it's used in the first place. Okay. I'm going to give it one more application and then I'm going to stop. definitely not coming off onto the q-tip nearly as much so maybe that was just um, a cleaning that was happening there there's almost nothing coming off now okay so I would suggest that when you use this you keep rubbing it until it doesn't come off quite as much I've given that a number of applications I'm happy with that I'm going to stop now I've cleaned the shaft out with um, the alcohol and cotton buds or Q-tips. gone around the pulley here, which is where the belt runs, and I've cleaned that. There was a lot of black in there. The rubber was sort of, I guess, disintegrating. So give it a good clean all the way around. I'm not taking this apart. There's a felt pad on the back here. I don't think you're supposed to oil that, so don't. I think that's just a clutch, since the pulley drives this wheel, driving the rubber, which makes the machine work. Uh, you wouldn't want that spinning, but I suspect if it ever gets jammed it will just spin. So I'm going to clean up and restore this idler wheel. The rubber seems sort of hardened, but there's a little bit of flexibility in there. Inside here there's a sort of foam ring, which I assume had grease or perhaps oil. Which I'm, It looks very delicate, I'm not going to um, fiddle about with that, I don't have a replacement. 
I kept all the parts when I took them apart. When I took this off the tape recorder, I put all the parts, sort of sandwiched it between, sandwiched them between this painter's tape. So they're there now when I need them. They're still stuck to the tape. First thing I'm going to do is to clean all the grease off with Q-tips, get all this dirt off. Um, avoiding this sort of uh, foam piece. Get the grease off of here. If you're going to do a project like this, you must have loads of Q-tips. They don't last very long. Mm, a bit tricky. Keep away from that. Ah, okay, it's come out. Well, that's all right. I'll just put it over there on the side. Okay, and the rest of this up. Excuse my hands, I've been painting today. My hands are quite filthy. Okay, so it's time for rubber renew. Take the top off, it's a bit smelly. Now, this wheel has some gunk here, I don't know what it is. It's not on the edge anyway, but I'm going to see if this will remove it. Just give it a once over. Weirdly enough, it's not taking a lot of the rubber off the side. I guess that's not really a contact point. Um, it was around the edge. I'll probably find, if it's anything like the pinch roller and the other piece I just did, that it will take a lot of rubber off. Anyway, I'm just soaking it in this, just working it in. That seems to be soaking in okay. I assume that's all right. It's going to restore it, put some elasticity back into it. That's what they say. And then with a clean bud, I'm going to go around the edge. Where a lot more black is coming off. Basically sort of washing it on, the Q-tip holds quite a lot of this solvent, or the renewer. Actually it's not coming off, the black isn't coming off as much as it did on the other one. Doesn't seem quite as thirsty. By the time we get round to the other side again. Um, soaked in, oh, using the fresh side now. Hardly anything coming off on this cotton bud this time. So I'm fairly satisfied that it's clean. I'm just going to go around the sides again. That's probably all I'm going to do, just letting it soak in. Okay. I think that's probably good enough. It's 
Still got some more on the tips there. I've taken everything apart that uh, needed to be taken apart uh, with with this new grease, this stuff super lube that I purchased. I've gone ahead and greased everything that was greased before. I'm using Singer sewing machine oil on the uh, sort of where it pivots. It's grease underneath, it pivots there. I put some sewing machine oil there on the top of these. This one as well, grease underneath a little bit of oil when necessary. Oh, the other thing is I um, cleaned all this and oiled it, whereas before when you pushed it it wouldn't spin. You can see now that it spins for a long time. So this is all in good shape. I've also greased everything here, everything that moves, put grease on it. So it's all like new again. But the other thing of course is the pinch roller. I took this all apart. I, I gave this a treatment with rubber renewer. Um, that seemed to work really well. It cleaned it up real nice and uh, got rid of all the shiny spots and re has reconditioned the roller so I, I recommend that. Um, these were also cleaned as part of the cleaning process. These pins were removed and these lifted off. These act as brakes. Um, when the reel tables come to the end of um, the tape and one tape unwinds, these will move into place and lock the table which stops that sort of overspin. This one is interesting because it has um, a pad here and it also has a pad there so it has two pads. This one uh, doesn't have a pad on this piece and it has one here and when this locks this piece here doesn't come in contact with this uh, reel table so I assume it doesn't need anything there. What I replaced the original felt with was this stuff that I believe I got this on eBay it comes in sheets it's quite thin just under an eighth of an inch thick and it's a sort of fibrous it's quite tough I wouldn't say it's felt, it's more of a fibre, a synthetic probably. It's got glue on the back. I used this bit here, which I cut into sections, and I used a super glue. And I held them in place with my fingers for a few minutes while they dried to make sure that they were adhered properly. Hi YouTubers, welcome back. I've done a bit more on this uh, reel to reel. I got this uh, flywheel back in here. Um, well, this is not a flywheel, but I got this in. I got this idler wheel here, all greased and fitted. Uh, I got the band onto the counter, which runs off of this. Looks like a bobbin a cotton reel. That was quite tricky to fit, actually. Now I've got this one here, which is the smaller. Uh, of the, the smallest of the four bands that came as the band replacement kit. That's going to be wrapped around this and attached around the top of the bobbin, so I'm going to do that next. So there are a total of four bands. I'm starting with the small bands. So uh, it's going around there. I'm just going to go over there, but before I do that, I'm just going to put a little bit of grease on the shaft. Put some in here. Put some on the shaft. Right, this is weird. No, it goes the other way because that fits in the hole. Okay, don't forget that plastic little bit there. Uh, keep the grease off the pad. There's no need to put grease on the pad, on the felt pad. Okay, let's rip this up again. Good. 
good. And I've got this back on top. Good. Now in the bag of the replacement belts you get four belts. You get this large one, this medium sized one. They're both the same kind of rubber thickness of rubber. And there's two that drive the counter. So there's the long one that drives from the counter to the cotton reel, as it were. And then the shorter one you saw me fit. Um, I believe this one fits on here. So just pull this out of the way. It goes underneath the rubber wheel. There's a pulley underneath there. Put it on, it's a bit tricky. There we go. And then it goes over the motor shaft. And that will be when that motor turns, that'll be driving all this. Now, the most complicated belt to fit is this one. There's a big flywheel here, and this goes around the bottom of the flywheel. So there's a small pulley here which this hooks on, and then that hooks onto here and that's fitted which I'm going to fit next but you have to somehow fit all this before you put this um, metal plate that the recording and the playback heads fit on so it's quite a lot that has to be juggled here I took this all apart and cleaned it cleaned the shaft and just used some light sewing oil on there so you can see that's flicking backwards and forwards very quickly which is the way it should do. Hi, I've been trying to reassemble this wheel here and some things didn't seem quite right. Uh, there was a large washer. It didn't seem to do anything. It was sort of loosely on there. But the spring that goes over it um, was on the outside of the washer, so this didn't seem to serve any purpose. So, I went online, downloaded the, uh, the schematics, and the, it's like a manual at a place called Vinyl Engine. And you can see here is a breakdown of how everything goes back together. So I've got a feeling at some point this was serviced and it didn't all go back the way it should. What it's calling for is there's a, a very thin 9mm plastic washer on top of that. Then there's a metal washer, again 9mm. And this goes on top of that. Then the spring. Then this plastic cup, which has a step in it, and that's designed so that the spring will engage around the step. And that goes on there. And then the shaft here goes down through the hole. So I need to lubricate it first. So I'm going to start off by using the grease. some grease on one of these sticks, work it down inside the shaft. The top of this shaft sits on this washer here so I put a little bit of grease on the washer because that will be subject to some rotation. I'm going to just coat the shaft itself. Okay, I'm not quite sure why that's not dropping in. Ah, there we go. That's it. Now on the back there's a couple of washers and a C-clip. So I'm going to sort that out and then we'll come back and fit this bit here. And the last thing is just to put this on. There's no washer here. Then the spring and then the screw. On the back of this where this where the axle goes through the bodywork there's um, I put three small washers which is what I took off on this side and on this side there was only two but that seems to take up all the slack so that the wheel itself doesn't move up and down so it's turning but it's not uh, shifting about so on the um, breakout diagram there isn't any mention of three washers but I suspect they just put whatever they needed to in order to take out the slack. 
That's my uh, interpretation of what's happening there. So we're going to screw this in, so that's the two reel tables fitted. Um, the last thing I'm going to do this evening is I'm going to put this rubber wheel here back, fit that. Now the first thing that goes on is this plastic washer, it has a little key sticking out there which engages in that notch. So you put that in first. The notch engages like that. Um, then I'm going to put some grease on the shaft. Just work it up and down. A little bit on the bottom of the washer, of the uh, this plastic piece, let's put a little bit on there. Then um, the next thing that's happening is this is going on. So I put a little bit of grease on the bottom where it contacts the other plastic piece. I'd like to get some inside, so I'm just going to take some of this cotton off this bud. A little bit of grease on it. I'm going to push that down inside there. I'm going to try to. There we go. Let's wipe some grease on the inside. That looks good. So then the wheel goes on with the bit that sticks out, the long shaft goes down. Keep the grease off the rubber if you can, I won't help. Inside the collar here there's a small plastic washer. It's the same as the wheel, it's the same kind of material. On top of that you get the, the metal washer and then we try to fit the C-clip. Difficult at the best of times. The last thing we're going to do is to fit this piece here, connect it all up. Now the first step in that is to run your new belt around the bottom of this wheel so that you're on the pulley. Like so. And then Without getting it too oily, put it over this small pulley on the flywheel. Now to assemble this, first thing I do is I put the crooked end into there. Um, and then I'm going to turn this through 180 degrees and hook the other end into there. Drop it back so it's connected and then flip it over. Now hook the little switch on, make sure you bring this up on top of the post. Now if you can, uh, get the flywheel in its shaft. it up just to hold it in one piece. 
Now there's one more connecting rod here which goes in the hole closest to the body. There's two holes there but the one that's closest to the main body here. And then you're going to have to stretch the band a little bit. There's linkage underneath here that also needs to be connected. It's connected to this switch. I've got to find a way to drop that in. Like so. And then the thing that causes most of the problems is there's this little metal strip with a pad on the end that has to rub on the side of the flywheel and it often gets trapped underneath. So just use a screwdriver or something to pry that out of the way. Whoops, we lost the linkage here. There we go. And that should take care of everything. So there it is. So all the four screw, screw holes are fitted properly on the pillars. It goes down without any problem, there's nothing's touching anything. So you can just hold it in place if you like and just test it, make sure everything moves freely. Which it does. And then put your four screws in. gently to start with till you get them all in. Be really careful you don't drop one of these because it would be difficult to get it again. You get lost inside the mechanism. Um, this one over here is tricky because the switch is right in the way. Be careful with that one, you don't want to lose the screw. And the last one's over here. Okay, just snug them up so they're not going to come undone again. Do them all equally. The next thing now is the three heads. I'm going to fit those. Mm -hmm. The last thing I've done here is I put the recording a race head and um, playback head on, remounted it. There are three screws. There's one there, one in the front there, one at the back. And these have little brass spacers underneath. The shaft of the flywheel comes up here. This is where the shaft turns and the pinch roller rubs against the tape. And on the top here there's a cover which I've just taken off and I'm going to put a little bit of grease in there which will just be left in there and that will lubricate that bearing. You don't want to put oil in there because it will run down the shaft but the grease should stay in place. And then there was this little cap that goes on and a very small screw that will probably require a special screwdriver. It's a tiny little screwdriver. I'm going to install the back panel now. I've taken the rubber feet and given them a nice wash. I just used some hand soap. Uh, these are fitted with little bolts. They have a Phillips or posi drive head. And at the bottom of the feet there's this metal plate which presumably stops the screw from pushing through. It supports the rubber. The panel itself, this is the panel. On the back of the panel, in this particular case, there's a piece of tape, quite thick tape, almost like insulation tape, 
which I'm going to leave there, presumably that's to stop one of these bolts from touching what I suspect is the transformer. It should go that way. Yeah, the trans... Uh, yes, well there's an electrical circuit board there, so perhaps it's just to keep it away from that. So this goes in like so, and then you screw your four feet in. At the beginning of my video I did not show how I took all this apart. So if you're going to do this project and you've gone all the way through the video you could look at this part of it as I put it back together and kind of reverse the process showing how the thing comes apart. So four feet go on. At this point I should probably say that I have not, apart from the motor start run capacitor, I have not done anything to any of the electronic components. I have cleaned the switches and done a few things like that, but I haven't replaced any electrical components. Just snugging these down. They don't have to be over tight. The rubber feet here are so that you can lay the tape recorder down and use it. So if you're on a console or some sort of desk or something, you could use it laying flat where you can stand it up. It's designed to go either way. When you lay it down, you have to take the whole guts of the machine out, turn it round and drop it back in. Otherwise it's playing upside down. I'll clean the front panel. I just used a little bit of hand soap and a soft sponge. Came up very nicely. There was some pitting on this. Um, it's some sort of plastic chrome. Um, it was almost like a metal chrome in the way it had pitted, but I managed to get most of that off. Go very carefully on the fascia here because this is all printed on here. Uh, you don't want to be scrubbing off the lettering. That would ruin the project. And it's a shame to do that. On the back here, that's where the counter is, and this is the little see-through window that I'm going to replace. It just pops in like that. I can see there's a, a line of glue around there where it's come loose. What I'm going to do is just add a tad of glue, not very much, just a drop. You can see it's seeping its way around, um, but it hasn't gone sort of downwards, so uh, that seems to be okay. I don't think that'll be a problem. So I'll let that dry, and then we'll start fitting everything back together. The last part of this project is to put this fascia back on. Now when it comes to fitting, I found the easiest way is to put the switches up, loosen the four screws on the side of the box, so it doesn't pinch because the edges of this front plate go inside the recess here. Make sure you've got this knob back on the shaft and push down as far as it will go. And then the last thing to think about is this here, this lever here, it has a little spring-loaded retaining rod here just behind the counter here. And sometimes, if it's moved over like that, it then gets on the wrong side of this spring-loaded retaining lever. And it ends up like that. And then the machine won't work. There's just enough room for you to get the front on with it in that position. But the machine won't operate. So you've got to pull this to the side, move this lever out the way. Whoops. There you go and get it tucked behind on the left hand side of this. And once you've done that, you can put this back on. You've got this 
piece here that wants to get in the way. It's a very snug fit, so you've got to get it over that and then get the front end, front edge down. You see how it clears the switches? And then you've got to tuck it in along both sides. And that's it. Then there are two screws with the cups that came out. They go at the top. This one goes on the other side. I'm just putting them in loosely. You can see how this knob here fits nicely underneath the fascia. And there are three screws that have washers, and they go on the side here. Don't over tighten them, you don't want to crack this plastic. There's one on over here. And the third one goes right here. Now, you might find that one of these three wires that goes to the recording and playback head is in the way, so just move it over slightly. Okay, and don't tighten this too tight because you might crack this plastic just so it takes up the slack. And then you have this little knob here that screws onto the lock. You've got to turn it the other way, that's why it wouldn't work. And the last two things to go back are these threaded cotter pin type things. They go here. And they basically secure the cover plate. I'm not going to tighten those too tight. This one on mine is broken slightly. And do those hand tight, don't need to be too tight. Four knobs, and what I do here is turn all these to the left, which is to the minimum position, and just line up your marker. So line it up with the N of the word min. That works nicely. Nope. Move it one notch over. There we go. And the last one. that and then there's this knob which is a little difficult to fix it's got this bit that sticks out that has to engage in a hole down inside there so you almost have to get that right where it needs to be before you push it on there we go And then this thing here, which in my case may be loose because of this break there, this pops on the top. And there we go, that's easy, had it in the wrong hole. So that is essentially the entire thing reassembled. The next thing will be to test it. So here we are, I've got a tape on it. It has the three speed selector here, I've got it on the fast speed. These tapes were recorded um, on the fast speed. These actually came from a recording studio, a London recording studio called AdVision, that were quite well known in the 60s, 70s and 80s. Uh, they had a lot of big bands, uh, well-known bands that uh, cut their records at the AdVision sound studios. I'm now going to turn it on for you so you can see how it works. We 
rewind function. Fast forward function. Break is good. Oh, 